Muslims celebrate Eid al-Kabir with messages of hope as President Muhammad Buhari felicitates with Nigerians. Federal Road Safety Corps assures of safety on the highways during the festive period. Plus, flood victims receive palliative. This and more on today's panorama. Eid Mubarak. I am Nolene Ebel Ame. <laughs> The Muslim faithful across Nigeria, like their counterparts the world over, have been celebrating the Feast of Sacrifice, otherwise referred to as Eid al-Kabir. President Muhammadu Buhari joined other members of the nation's first family to observe the two-record congregational prayer of Thanksgiving at his official residence in line with the COVID-19 safety advisory. The president tasked the nation's armed forces to do much more in keeping Nigeria safe and secure, even as he promised that corrupt elements and institutions will be appropriately dealt with. Details in our subsequent bulletin. The two suppurgatory rakat prayer of Eid al-Kabir at the Abuja National Mosque led by the Murshid Professor Shehu Galadanchi was held under COVID-19 protocol. The Imam's sermon was a symbolic reminder to worshippers of sacrifice and the need to support the growth and development of the country through government policies and support of citizens, especially at this trying time. Abdullahi Ajia has report that with much awareness of the challenge of the COVID-19, worshippers in celebration mood came prepared for the Eid prayer. Entry into the premises was closely monitored to ensure compliance with COVID-19 safety protocol. After thanking the Almighty Allah, we are also thanking the government for what they have been doing with regard to this uh, COVID-19. But then we plead with the government that they should do more in order to face this problem. One very important thing which we want the government to do is to try to control the prices. Controlling the prices is what will help the people. If prices are not controlled, then these traders will continue to increase the prices of the commodity. President Muhammad Buhari has called on Nigerians to continue to exercise patience and understanding over the inconveniences created by precautionary measures taken for COVID-19, especially the regulations on places of worship. In his Salah message to Muslims on the occasion of Eid al-Kabir celebration, President Buhari said the outbreak of coronavirus has made it difficult for people to gather in places of worship as they are used to, urging worshippers to abide by the guidelines for safety of their lives and loved ones. President Buhari commended the sacrifices of Muslims and Christians in abiding by the COVID-19 guidelines for the good of society, assuring that the administration will continue to provide economic reliefs to the people. President Buhari reminded worshippers that COVID-19 is a worldwide affliction with churches and mosques closed around the world, while social distancing has been imposed to safeguard public health. The president called on worshippers not to forget the symbolic significance of the sacrifices of the Eid al-Kabir. He also reminded Nigerians of his efforts to root out corruption in the country, stating that the efforts had so far 
brought a lot of changes in the country's polity. He appealed for more support and understanding as investigations are carried out on both legacy and fresh cases. With the Eid al-Kabir celebration, prayers and messages of hope for Muslim faithful amidst the containment of COVID-19 have been pouring in from different quarters. Elizabeth Omori compiled the Salah messages. President of the Senate, Hamid Lawan, felicitates with all Nigerians and in particular the Muslim Ummah on the occasion of this year's Eid al-Kabir. Senator Lawan, in a statement, noted that Eid al-Kabir, Islam's feast of sacrifice, is very significant to Muslim faith as it is a reminder of the imperative of unconditional obedience to Allah, the most merciful. He urged Nigerians to continue to seek the face of the Almighty, especially in the fight against COVID-19, as the National Assembly is collaborating with the executive in response to the pandemic and other legislative interventions. Similarly, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has urged Muslims to rededicate themselves to their creator and pray for the country during the period of Eid al-Kabir. Bajabi Amila says there is need for prayers even more pressing at this time that the coronavirus pandemic is ravaging the world, including Nigeria. The speaker said, with fervent prayers, Nigeria will be able to surmount the numerous challenges bedeviling the country, including insecurity. In the same vein, the IGP, while assuring Nigerians of adequate security, congratulates the Muslim faithful in the country as they join other Muslims across the world to celebrate this as Eid al-Kabir festival. The Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu, has directed all the commissioners of police and Assistant Inspectors General of Police in the 17 zonal commands to intensify confidence, building patrols in all nooks and crannies of the country particularly on major highways and around critical national infrastructure. The core marshal of the Federal Safety Corps, Dr. Boboye Uyemi, has urged Muslims to adhere to the health and safety regulations as provided by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. In a statement, the core marshal said the celebration is centered on the need for obedience to God and for the people to always show discipline and sacrifice. The corps marshal enjoined motorists to particularly imbibe the message by using the road with caution through obedience to traffic rules and regulations, reminding them of the PTF's directive that vehicles must carry only 50% of the passenger capacity as adequate personnel are on ground to ensure compliance. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. The trial of Prophet Abraham to the will of Allah and devotion to slaughter his son Ishmael centuries ago set the stage for the spiritual and historical significance of the Feast of Sacrifice, also known as Eid al-Adha. From Lafia, Ali Tijani Muhammad puts the conversation in the context of greater Eid significance in Dul Dulhijjah, the last lunar month of Islamic calendar. Sacrifice is fundamental for the celebration of Eid al-Kabir. The celebration of the sacrifice is the culmination of pilgrimage as one of Islam's five pillars on the night of Dhul Hajj. In the Holy Quran, a simple conversation between father and son, united in strong belief to the will of Allah, admonish humanity on devotion and sacrifice. Submissive to the will of Allah. You must be submissive, just like Ismail, was so submissive to his father. These are lessons Ali Utanku and others we came across at the Lafiara market say will remain evergreen. And it teaches us how to love ourselves and love our brothers and sisters. It has to do with sacrifice in order to seek for Allah's forgiveness. By living in harmony, by bringing one another together so that they, we can all live peacefully in the country. Similarly, a prayer in open ground like this in Lafia may not hold as the faithful are expected to converge on mosque for the spiritual exercise. People must be on their face mask, observe physical or social distancing, observe all the protocols associated with COVID-19. It will be for spiritual benefit in the life of this world and hereafter. El Lafia, Aliyu Tijani Mohamed, NTE News. 
And now to talk more on the Eid al-Kabir celebration, we have in the studio Ustaz Sharafuddin Aliagon, the Chief Imam and Zonal Missioner, Nasfad FCT. Ustaz, you are welcome to Panorama and Barakat Thank you, very much. Thank to you, you very much for having me. Same to you. All right. Okay. I'm sure you will agree with me that this year's Eid al-Kabir celebration is unique and different. Can yes. you let us in? Yes, uh, it is quite unique and uh, different in the sense that um, we observe our eight uh, prayer, the two nafila, the spargatory one, at our respective Jumat Mosque, hmm. not at the praying ground as usual. Okay. At the same time, uh, in Islam, when you observe Salat, you, you, they, they say shoulder to shoulder, toe to toe. But this time around, we couldn't have this. We couldn't observe this. Mm -hmm. We had to maintain social distancing. So people have to leave some meters in between to observe the salad. So it makes it very different. Okay, let's now look at the aspects of the animal sacrifice. Yeah. Is it compulsory? Yeah, it is uh, an emphatic sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad right from the time of Prophet Ibrahim whom Allah asked to sacrifice his son Ismail for him all alone and uh, he got up to bring this into reality before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ransomed the soul of Ismail with a very big ram. So it, it boils down to the Islamic principles from the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that every Muslim, every Islamic monotheism should copy and emulate Prophet Muhammad who sacrificed two big rams, one for himself and one for his followers who won't be able to do so. Now it becomes an emphatic sunnah for everyone who is in position to purchase a ram or two, a cow, a camel or goods. They must do that to sacrifice it for Allah on that each day. And that serves as, I mean, I mean, emulating Prophet Muhammad, uh, Prophet Ibrahim, down to Prophet Muhammad in terms of submission, in totality to the will of Allah, in terms of love for Allah, in terms of sincere sincerity in faith to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everyone who is in position is required and is expected to sacrifice an anima of these four affirmations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Salat day. Okay, now what happens to those that have no capacity to do that? Well, very interesting. Um, I, I, I mentioned earlier that Yani Daha Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Prophet of Islam at the first time of his sacrifice sacrificed two big grams. I said one for himself and one on behalf of his followers who would not be able at one point or the other make a sacrifice for one reason or the other. Mm. That one stands for them. And for those who could not, it is being, uh, it is being mentioned in the, in the Sunnah of Rasulullah that you, 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 mean, you divide the meat after cleaning it into three, mm. one for yourself and your family, one for your relatives and friends, and the other one for the vulnerables, mm. for the pure ones who won't be able to get one. So you share it as you are happy in your respective homes. We want everyone to be happy. You extend this happiness to other families who could not find one to sacrifice. Okay, beautiful. Now, let's juxtapose this animal sacrifices uh, to nation building. What do you have to say on this? Yeah, what I really want to say is, number one, um, it's, 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 it's as if it is making every head of family to be responsible. They will be dutiful. You do what is required of you in terms of your job to make the necessary ends meet to be able to buy at least one ram. And if you are buying it, you are buying it from the people of this country. So it is supporting and it is promoting the economic aspect of it. And number two, welfare of the poor citizens. By the time you share the meat, everyone will have something to eat at their respective home and it brings everyone into what is called togetherness, unity and happiness. And coming together, it is when we are happy that we can achieve. So this brings about happiness and it is to be extended to other vulnerable Muslims who will not be able to get any. Okay, 
Thank you so much. Just quickly before we go, what do you have to say on the celebration as we are in the era of COVID-19? Uh, well, um, I want to say that um, Muslims all over the world should be mindful of the kind of celebration, bearing in mind the uh, safety protocol of COVID-19. Wherever we are going to, we have to be conscious of this protocol. Let not the, the feast carry us away into forgetting the necessary protocol. Let's be sincere with whatever we are doing and let's see everyone as being part of us. It doesn't have to be a Muslim. Even you can give a non-Muslim part of the meat so that everyone can rejoice and celebrate all together and that will bring us to a better life as a nation. All right. Thank you so much for your um, thoughts on uh, Panorama, Ustaz Sharafuddin. Thank you very much. And I wish you happy celebration. I wish you the same. Okay. Thank you. I've been speaking with Ustaz Sharafuddin Aliagon, the chief imam and zonal missioner, Nasfat FCT. We pause here for a break. News Panorama continues shortly. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, cutting into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly. Or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. Thank you for staying with us on Panorama. The Namdi Azikiwe International Airport Abuja is witnessing heavy traffic as a result of Eid al Kabir celebration. Haman Jabani, who was at the airport, reports that there is restriction adherence to the new normal. Passengers coming into Namdi Azikiwe International Airport to catch their flights. The situation is calm. However, as most people follow the laid down protocol, others compromise it. Uh, the process to get to where I am now to board my flight takes a little bit more time because you have to go through the COVID-19 uh, requirements. Yeah, so, so you need to get to airport earlier than usual. It was more exciting. Every bag was fumigated and it gives us a lot of confidence that the airport is safe. Before I could get my ticket, it took me like three, four days to actually get it. Not like before that, I would just go into the line and purchase it. The fair is, I thought maybe the fare would be more than this. When I was earlier traveling two weeks ago, we're not even up to 30 passengers. But today, I think the, the whole aircraft was quite full. MTA was informed that only two airlines are yet to commence operations, while those in business say they are coping. Because of the specific period, uh, passengers are turning off to come to the airport to travel. All the fare, there are some changes, a little change uh, on the fare because of the increase of VAT and uh, uh, PSC, passenger service charge. There has been some upsurge, uh, as it normally happens um, every year, um, especially to the northern states. 
Maduguri, Yola, Pano. Yes, we have a lot of people traveling. The key players say Nigerians should adjust to the new normals at the airports and government should make necessary arrangements for international flights. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. From Abuja, we take you to my degree. The Northern Governor's Forum has condemned the attack on the convoy of Governor Babagana Umara Zulum of Borno State, describing the act as callous and reprehensible. Simon Balko Lalong, in a statement through Director of Press and Public Affairs, Dr. Makut Simon Macham, said the attack on Governor Zulum's convoy, who was on his way to Baga, a commercial town in Kukawa, local government area, to personally distribute relief materials to internally displaced persons for the Salah celebrations, was another desperate attempt by criminal elements to sabotage the efforts of the governor towards reducing the suffering of vulnerable people who have been traumatized by terrorists. In response to the massive destruction of lives and property in Guagualada Area Council of the FCT, as a result of torrential rainfall that claimed lives, the FCT administration has donated food items to the affected communities to cushion the impact. FCT Minister of State Ramatu Tijani Aliu led a delegation to the communities. Mariam George Jitubo tells us more. While assuring victims that the administration has concluded plans to assist them in the provision of household utensils and building materials after relevant government agencies might have ascertained the level of destruction and number of homes affected, the FCT Minister of State, Ramatuta Jani oh, Aliu, also warned residents to stay off waterways to avoid future occurrence. This rainy season, we roast our corns, we boil our knees, and we eat and just throw. Most of the time constitutes 75% of the blockages in the drainage. Because if we have two of this kind of occurrence in a year, the burden will be so much for the people. The good people of these communities need a lot of assistance, ranging from your home office to all agencies that will bring support to this community. Representative of the Director General, FCT Emergency Management Agency, Florence Wenegeme, reveals that out of the six casualties, there was a family of five that got drowned in the flood, adding that four of them are yet to be found. The primary search and rescue team will be not relent until we are able to find the remaining persons. However, we want to also call on the attention of the community of the houses that have been built on the waterways. Can we let them kindly cooperate with us so that this will not occur again? Items donated include 300 bags of rice, 500 bags of maize, millet, among other food items. Mariam George, Jitubo, NTA News. Now let's bring you an update on COVID-19. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced 481 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. The latest figures released bring the total number of confirmed cases to 42,689 infections in Nigeria. A breakdown of the new cases from 15 states indicates that FCT recorded the highest number for the day with 96 cases while Lagos State has 89, Plateau 68, Ogun 49, Edo 44, Rivers 43, Oyo 25, and Oshun recorded 23 cases. Others are Delta 15, Enugu 11, Kano and Kaduna states recorded 7 and Bauchi 2 cases. The day's tally is completed by Bielsa and Yobe states recording 1 case each. Confirmed cases by state Lagos has the highest with 15,000 and 43, followed by FCT with 3,710. Oyo comes third with 2,713 cases. With the latest development, total number of active cases stands at 
22,541, while 19,270 cases have been successfully treated and discharged, while 878 patients died, unfortunately. Meanwhile, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, says that returnees will be fully integrated into the society. She gave the assurance when she paid a visit to the returnees in Abuja. Ruth Aguele reports. Their innocent minds doesn't paint a picture of their present reality. But like the slogan, no place like home, it clearly depicts the reality for Ali Ahmed. After spending four months in Algeria and another four in the Niger Republic with his family seeking greener pastures. No. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, who was represented by the Federal Commissioner for the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Senator Bashir Garba Mohammed, has come to assure the returnees of federal government's commitment towards their reintegration into the society, while taking into cognizance their rights as citizens of Nigeria. In line with the revised quarantine protocol from the PTR COVID, please note that arrangements are in place to test you within 72 hours of your arrival. For Ali and his co returnees, there may be light at the end of the tunnel with a hope of starting afresh. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela, NT News. And that concludes News Panorama. Thank you for watching. Take responsibility. COVID-19 is real and stay safe. There is a lot of fake news and report circulating, especially on social media, on the coronavirus. Do not believe or partake in the spread of these fake reports. If it is not on the official website or news from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC, disregard such report. Only together can we beat this virus. Only together can we overcome this pandemic. Follow the instructions and guidelines provided to combat this virus. Most importantly, stay at home. Self-isolate, regardless of your status. The virus doesn't move unless we move. Let us work together to better Nigeria. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Service of the NDA.